Hi, I'm Tanner Olson, and this is the Walk a Little Slower podcast, a podcast where I share a little hope, a little love, and a little bit of what I've been learning. This is a podcast where you were invited to slow down, to lean in, to hold fast, and to eventually keep going. Before we get into today's episode, I wanted to say thank you for listening and for sharing this podcast with your friends and your online community. And thank you so much for those of you who have left reviews. I know that on Apple Podcasts, you can write in a review. And on Spotify, you can just click five stars. If, hey, if you think this podcast is a five-star podcast, which I wouldn't be upset if you left a review like that. In today's episode, I'll be sharing a conversation with Donovan Beck. Donovan is an author, photographer, and all-around creative guy. He is many things, but, but I know him through the world of poetry. You can find Donovan's work on Instagram and TikTok at The Mind of Soul. I hope you enjoy this conversation with Donovan Beck. I don't necessarily know how to start a podcast. I figure you just kind of jump into it. I don't want it to be yeah. like a radio interview where it's like, and now we're here with Donovan. Ben. <laughs> um, although, although we are, uh, but tell me about that though. Cause uh, similar to myself, like I go by written to speak online, but mm-hmm. my real name is Tanner Olson. You're under at the mind of soul, but your real name yeah. is Donovan. So where did, where did, where did, where did that, where did that come from? Um, it comes from three places. So one, a childhood nickname. Uh, I was really into dance and creation as a young kid. So I had friends that were also dancers. Um, and in the dance community, especially in like the hip hop dance community, um, your dancing name is something that's very really crucial to who you are. It's part of your personality, your dance style and everything. Um, so soul was a dance name that was given to me by my friends and community. Um, the second reason is my love for space, my love for the stars and how we talk about the universe. Um, and you'll hear it in a lot of my writing. It's always there. It's some, somehow incorporated. It's just my love for talking about the stars and talking about space. So solve from that. And then the last one, which is the most crucial one to like who I am as a person was, I forget the context of when I heard this, but it was, um, I was listening to someone tell a story about how the earth doesn't, or the sun doesn't actually set around the earth it doesn't go away it just happens to be doing work on the other side of the earth right um and so i he was explaining this mindset of saying even when it's dark you should still be trying to work and not in pushing forward your ideas and pushing forward what you believe in and trying to make the world a better place the sun never gives up on the goal of making the world a better place it just moves to a different side of the world every night um, and so the mind of soul became this sort of tagline of my mindset of life which was in positively impact the world every single day in your own way, no matter what. Um, and so, yeah, so that kind of stuck. Um, yeah. And then it it was, it worked out. And it's also a unique enough at that on every social media, it's at the mind of soul. And I never yeah. have to worry about, do I have my at on this platform <laughs> or not? It's great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are the three places that it comes from. That's really cool. Um, so how do you, how do you introduce yourself? Like when someone says, Hey, Donovan, what do you do? What is your response yeah. to them? Because I think you have your hands in a lot of different things. Oh, yeah. It's it's difficult. Uh, the, the most general answer that I give is, hi, I'm Donovan. I'm a filmmaker, author, and storyteller, and I'm a general human being who likes to make things. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's kind of it. That's what I like to say. It's kind of the easiest way for me to explain what I do. Um, especially because I work as a writer and creator online, but also help build curriculum and organizations around mental health and mm-hmm. film and make commercials and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, filmmaker, author, and storyteller and general human being who likes to make things. I like that. That's a good, that's a good quick bio. And it's difficult yeah. when, when like you are a writer, because there's not a lot of people who are just writers, yeah. like you're a writer Absolutely. and you're also this and you're this and you're this and then someone asks yeah. hey can you also do this and i feel like similar to myself you're like yeah i can do that too and i would love to do that too because kind of going back to what you were saying about the name and the tagline and the sun like mm-hmm. yeah if i can spread a little bit of light or a little bit of hope here in this area i would love to do that uh, yes yeah. so so why do you write 
I, so I'm a person who has loved art for his entire life, right? Whether it was through dance or music creation or eventually finding my footing in film and photography and making storytelling um, and writing was always this part that was super crucial to me, kind of just as an outlet. Um, I discovered the world of spoken word writing and free verse writing, which I do now, um, while dealing with a really bad bout of depression at 16 years old. Um, I discovered writers like Andrea Gibson and Rudy Francisco and Isma Shkanji, um, and I discovered their writing and it allowed me to put voice to who I was, what I was feeling in my life. Um, and then eventually it just stuck. It was always this feature of my life that was sort of in proxy to the rest of my life. Um, even to this day, even though I'm now was the like, full-time creator and writer and this is what i do um i still view myself purely as a photographer and a filmmaker um because that's what i was doing for work before everything happened with building the brand that i have now mm-hmm. um but i sort of fell into this world of writing as a way to make all the ideas that were in my head outward and then eventually through covid and then eventually getting onto TikTok and instagram um, and sharing my work on TikTok and instagram people connected with it people grew into it um which was awesome and amazing and we got to build this incredible community of people around the world who enjoy the stories that are so crucial to who i am and eventually i was like let's just let's see what happens if we dive into this world fully if i blend my expertise and art style as a filmmaker with my love and passion for writing what happens um and here we are <laughs> and interviews is, and things like this. And this, this is, is this is where we end up. Yeah, absolutely. So it's that's fun. really cool. That's really cool, man. Um, what's your? You put a lot of things on the internet too. What is your yeah. relationship like with social media? Like, how much do you like put limits on how much time you spend on there? Because oh, for my, myself, I'm like, oh, so my soul is being sucked, and I need to put my phone <laughs> in the other room for a little while. What's it like? Yeah. For you? Yeah, it's uh, it's one of the most common questions I get is why do I not respond to DMs? <laughs> um, and and I and I generally don't. And I will read all of them. I see all of them, but I typically don't. Um, there are some like really staunch boundaries I have with myself in social media, um, because of how just drained it can be at times. I am the first one to admit that social media is draining and has caused us a lot of social unrest and. Uh, isolation and loneliness, but I love the idea and the concept of social media. And recently I was working with the ASFP um, and Jed Foundation on our campaign, Seize the Awkward. And we were talking about in the past five years, we've seen this incredible shift in how social media is used, especially through the pandemic, where we got to see communities and people connect and grow with one another mm-hmm. uniquely through social media, which I love and I'm so proud to be a part of. But there are definitely times where I'm just like, I'm going to shut this off and leave it simply for my own sake of mind, especially because of the nature of what I post yeah, and what my writing is. It's dedicated to the world of mental health. It's dedicated to the world of talking about and destigmatizing conversations around anxiety, suicide, and depression. And that's tiring at times. <laughs> uh, it's very, very tiring. Um, so there are times where I have to put a limit on myself and say that, this is, I've done enough today with this conversation. So, yeah, because it is, it is extremely draining to talk about the heavy things. Yeah. It is, it's hard to wake up every day and say, I'm going to share, especially the, the pieces that you share uh, are, yeah. are quite vulnerable, but the, the, but the vulnerability doesn't feel like awkward or pushed. It feels more offered and genuine, um, yeah. which is a great way to, to do that. But it, it's all, it, you can't help but feel tired afterwards it's like for people who who journal or write or create as well like i know that when i write and i write something extremely personal personable like i feel better but i'm also ready for a nap you know like maybe i don't want to come back to it for just a little while why do you think that people connect with your words or with with your language or with your poetry yeah so i'm the first one to always explain that i don't i don't write or say anything entirely unique or outlandish, right? Right. Um, Right. What I mean by that is saying that what I write is the thoughts and feelings and expressions that I have and the ones that I know that I'm not alone in feeling. Mm -hmm. I just simply was able to find the words to explain it. 
Right. And so everything that I write is just me trying my best to explain the things that I feel mm-hmm. so that hopefully somebody else who's feeling the same, who can't find the words, finds those words. Um, like A Friendly Reminder, for example, which is my most known poem, 16 million views and somehow <laughs> half a million shares to the internet. This is yeah. crazy. Um, I remember people were asking me during some interviews that happened after it went viral. They're like, why do you think it connected to so many people? And I said, because everyone's thought about it. Yeah. Everyone's thought about the way they look. They thought about how they don't feel confident when they look in the mirror. Um, or when they ever they see themselves in pictures and they're posing for pictures and they just don't feel confident. And everyone's thought about the idea that I've never seen myself through the eyes of somebody else. Or when I'm doing what I love or doing talking about things I love. I've never seen that exact moment. Mm-hmm. I just put words to that. And that's my job as a poet. I like to make the analogy that poets are just note takers of the universe. Mm -hmm. All we do is we just notice the things that are going on in life and we Mm -hmm. just write about it. Um, So that's why I think people connect with it. I think people are just like me. They're just dealing with the the feelings of love and loss and learning to love yourself and learning to be confident in who you are. And I take people on those journeys with me so they don't feel alone. My Mm -hmm. biggest thing I say on my page is, I, my aim is to make this place like a safe place for you and me to have conversation about the things that we feel. So. I like that. It's hard. It's hard not to like what you just said, by the way, but that's also kind of <laughs> part of like your, uh, let me ask you this question. Do you get, you know, you said you don't like spend time in DMS and in the comments as well, but have you gotten mm-hmm. messages like a lot of pushback from people about what in you're terms saying, of like, about what you're saying, not necessarily like the, the content, but like what you're uh-huh. saying with your words mm-hmm. and not like, is it good or is it not good? Are people right, disagreeing right, right. with you? Not typically. I think that's kind of the beauty of how niche of a community I have and how mm-hmm. niche of a space that like poetry, TikTok and spoken word writers and like what yeah. we do is super, it's really niche form of art. And mm-hmm. so like to get to me or to get to other writers, you have to kind of be looking for us. Um, you have to be kind of looking for poetry. You have to be examining your life. Um, and I, and so there's, there's obviously always like little pushback in comment sections and stuff like that, but nothing that's drastic. Um, again, cause I think people just understand that these are pieces made to explain the things that we feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I try to make the, the environment as welcoming to everybody as it can from people who are just on their own mental health journey or people who are years into therapy and awakening and all this sort of stuff and so i try to make a space that just says hey welcome to the table everyone's here so and i think you do a really a really really good job of that when i come across your videos or when your videos come across me however the internet works i never get upset and i think it's because Mm -hmm. well part of that is um because you're kind and you're vulnerable and your videos are just they're well made. Like the lighting is beautiful and perfect. I remember <laughs> when I when I stumbled upon your work, I sent it to a friend and I was like, this is the stuff that we should have been making for years. Uh, and it's because it's just you, it, the the visual reflects the writing. And I think that yeah. comes through through really, really clear. Um, I'm when glad. People, it, yeah, you're doing a great job. Um, when when people stumble across your work, what do you what do you hope they get out of it? So when a friendly reminder went viral, there was one comment that stuck out to me. And it pop- the same sort of comment pops up every now and again on some videos that it just simply reads, this feels like talking to a friend when you both escape a party and you find the nearest empty room. <laughs> and I was like, yes, that's the goal. Um, yeah, my background's in film. My background's in making things tell a story and feel and sound in a, in a way that I want to. So when I started, when I set out to make these videos, I was like, okay, let's make, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this in the way that I want to do it, which is Mm -hmm. take my film, my film expertise and that, that part of me with my poetry and say, yeah, when I, when I, when people see my videos, I hope they stop and slow down. That's always my goal is that, a lot of people treat social media as a sort of escape. And so we scroll and we just shoot past everything. And then instantly when a video of mine pops up, you're hit with the pace, the music, mm-hmm. the slow zoom in, slow zoom out. Um, and just saying, hey, let's talk for a second. You can go on your way after we're done. But for these 60 seconds you're with me, let's sit here for a second. So 
I like that. I like that a lot. Before before we head out, will you share a poem with us? Yeah, let's. While Sorry, while you think of a while that. you think of a poem to share, I am going to share a book a poem from your book, and do it. It's one of my favorites that I came across. Uh, actually, there's there's two in here. I do want to mention there's one called Long Way Home, and I have a poem called uh, Long Way Home as well, and it feels very it. similar to this. And when I read yours, I was like, that sounds exactly like what I wrote without like having seen seen it before. You're you seeing mine, and I was like. And that's what I love about writing is, is people can take the same idea, write about it, and it'd be uniquely theirs. And I think sometimes when people say, oh, I want to be a writer, they're afraid that they're going to write something that someone else has already written. And we already know, like, everything has already been written. You just take a minute, write down what you want to write down, and then share it with the world. But I want to share yeah. a poem that you wrote called Note from a Coffee Shop. It goes like this. I love it. When the world feels like too much. When the weight of the universe finds its way onto your shoulders, when your eyes feel heavy with time, come into this. We made you a cup of coffee or tea. Don't worry. We know how you like it. You are safe here. You don't have to steer this ship alone. We are all sailors just finding our way home. But right now, the world is quiet and the universe can wait. So open your eyes. Cheers. Yeah. Can I, I tell like you the that story one. of that poem? Please, please. So I, I'm a person who escapes when, I, when I'm dealing with mental stress. Uh, so I'll find, I'll get into my car, fill up the tank, and just drive. Mm -hmm. um, and so that poem was written after like, a mental break when I was 19. Mm. Um, and I, I just took my car to Yosemite, which I live in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, Yosemite is about five and a half hours away from me. Um, and I just drove. I drove into the middle of the night. Finally got there at like one o'clock in the morning, had last minute rented this cabin. And then the next day went to Yosemite, experienced it all. It's my favorite national park. It has such a crucial part of my, my soul in it. Um, and then when I was on the drive back, I stopped at a coffee shop in Fresno. Um, and I just sat and I wrote that poem, uh, thinking about the idea of just what this all means. Um, and how safe I feel when I get to just get lost in nature or coffee shops or things like that. And so that's why I wrote Notes for a Coffee Shop. I like that. Um, so this poem is, uh, right now I'm working on my second book. And uh, the, the second book is titled Sunbreak, Notes on Hope. And the entire book is written about the idea and the concept of hope, which I believe is, as humans, our most powerful resource that we have. Everything that we've ever accomplished or done in our life has been on the foundation of hope. Um, so I wrote this piece as part of the larger collection of this, of this book. I think I had shared it a couple months ago, um, but this is a poem called A Few Notes on Living. Um, and so yeah, A Few Notes on Living. One, it will never make sense. We are all sitting inside of a body made of 16 billion cells, all somehow just working enough to put words inside of our mouths and move blood through these rivers of our spirit and push motion into these failing arms. The odds are that there are too many variables for all of this to work, all of this body to function, too. But somehow it does. Despite all logic, all scientific reasoning, you and I are still sitting here together on a hurtling rock through space with four wave clovers in our hands just to give us a better chance of making it. And somehow, we did. On the days that living didn't even seem like a possibility, when the clovers had all but wilted and the strength inside of my vocal cords had fallen to dust, when the only piece of English I could muster up is, none of this makes sense, you replied with a hushed reality. Maybe it won't. Maybe it doesn't. Just perhaps the notes on living that we keep inside of these semi-bank pages will just read try. The same way that 17 billion cells inside of your body try. The same way they try and they try with no intention of being successful and they try and they try boldly. They hang clovers around their necks just simply to try again. And three, somehow it all works. But you wouldn't know until you try. That's great. That's great. Where uh, where can we find your work, Donovan? At the Mind of Soul. It's a it's at T H E M I N D O F S O L on literally every social media there is. <laughs> um, 
or themindofsoul.com, which is my website. Um, or if you're interested in finding my first book, you can find it on or at uh, A Fool's Guide to the Universe on Amazon, as well as my own website. That's awesome. And when's the second book coming out? Do you have a, a date yet? In the most ideal world, by the end of this year, okay, uh, the end of 2020, uh, in a realistic fashion, the beginning of next year. Awesome. Well, so we'll when see. it comes out, we'll be sharing it around for sure. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for your time, man. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Walk a Little Slower podcast. Special thanks to Donovan for joining us for this episode. Again, you can find his work at The Mind of Soul, or if you have Google, just type in The Mind of Soul and his work will certainly come up. I want to know from you, who would you like to hear on the podcast next? Send an email to writtentospeak at gmail.com and let me know, or just send me a message on Instagram. Again, my handle is at writtentospeak, or you can find me on Facebook as well. If you would like to support this podcast and my ministry, please visit patreon.com slash written to speak to become a patron. Your monthly donation allows me to spread hope and announce love through written and spoken word like this podcast. Well, that will do it for this episode. I hope you have a wonderful week. Here is to walking a little slower.